yeah, I guess, how did you do that? What were sort of... You know, it was it was a lot of fixing and it's, it's really, it's much easier to speak about it now because I also understand through all my own research what was actually happening. But in that moment, especially, you know, when it was 14 years ago or 10 years ago with my father, or even now four years ago or five years ago since the accident, you know, it, it was a lot more of wandering around in the dark. I didn't really understand what was happening. And, and I just sort of, it was kind of like, I use this analogy a lot, but, you know, someone can put a nail on the table and say the nail needs to go in the wall. And there's just sort of this room around you of things and you don't know what a hammer is. You don't know that that's what its job is. There's so many ways to get a nail in a wall. And, you know, I started by using my own palm and, and like it made you know, marks on me and hurt me to do it, but I got it done, you know, and then maybe I went to like a shoe, it works, but you know, it's like leaving a print on the wall and it's cracking. And like, so it's like, you get how the metaphor goes to eventually where you pick up this thing, which we know as a hammer that has like a grip for my hand specifically, and is meant to perfectly put a nail in a wall without creating any damage. And so that's sort of what that process was like for me. And, and what that process was like with me is every time I tried to fix it, every time I tried to get rid of it, it. Every time I tried mm. to exit grief club, um, I, I had a really hard mental health lesson that would follow very quickly because that just wasn't possible. And so it became this idea and sort of the basis of this book of, you know, not learning to live without someone or something, but learning who you are now within that loss. And so it's a series of experiments of getting to know yourself and not trying to fix anything, but honoring what comes up. And it's like, okay, what do you mean? Like honor what comes up? But just like we did at the start of this call, today was very different and has been very different because what today is for me. Today, 10 years ago, there were things I still could have done and I'm gonna try not to get emotional, but that is the reality of my today. When I think about July 20th, every year, all the days leading up to July 21st, I know where I was and I know that there was things that could have been done to maybe change this horrible thing. And then on July 21st, even though it seems like it's the big bad day, there's usually a release. There's, and we're past the point where something could have been done. And that's sort of the way my, my mind goes. So, you know, honoring the journey is in, in each of those days and every day before or after, I'm waking up every morning and checking in with myself and actually based on how I'm feeling and how I'm doing, making decisions and adjusting my day and using my own tools from, from those experiments I've done over time based on what's coming up, you know? So it's not going to be a one thing, like you might have headache and this certain medicine that you go to, you know, this is like the most complex headache of all time and different things are going to help it. So it's this thing where I go, okay, so, you know, there's a lot of anxiousness here. There's, you know, this, the, this tendency that I, I want to ruminate. I know I want to ruminate today. And so all day today, I've been pulling out my, we're only in this moment presence tool. And that might look totally different to somebody else. But for me, I know exactly what this is. And I, and I just gently keep saying to myself, that's not the moment we're in, buddy. Right now, you can smell the grass right now. It's raining in London right now. You know, it's like what? And I it just, it's just going, where are we in this moment? Where are we in this moment? And, but I, that didn't work yesterday. That's not what yesterday was for. Right. So it's this idea of honoring where you're actually at. And it's very difficult to get a point where you're willing to do that because it, it can feel very conflicting to deal with where you're actually at. And it can feel like failure, it felt like failure for me when I would feel this way again, six years later, seven years later, 10 years later, normally before I came to these conclusions, it really would have felt like failure that I'm still feeling this way, but it's not, it's, you know, it's, it's honoring exactly what would come up and, and logically, I mean, yeah, that was my dad and the terrible thing happened. And, you know, so what's going on right now and, and how can I kind of tend to that? So, um, you know, I, I say like, I can't give you a toolkit. And I can't give you 10 things and tell you where the hammer is and what the screwdriver is when it comes to grief. What I can offer you is spending a year with me and you experiment where you start to identify what your hammer looks like and what your screwdriver looks like, and you know where to get them. And also always having the willingness that the second that doesn't work anymore, that there's an upgrade, there's a change, you don't use that tool anymore, whatever. There's, there's no finality. And it's like, I know I sound like a broken record, but I have to tell myself this 10 times a day, every day, there's no fix, buddy. So what's coming up? 
there's no, yeah, I get it. You want it to be over, you know? And it's just, it's naturally like our brains are wired for stories to end, for patterns to complete, for things to be resolved. And this isn't a resolve, you know, grief club starts today, it starts and it ends never. And I didn't want to be the guy that said that originally. And that's why I stayed quiet for 14 years. But now I realize that that can be very, very uplifting in a not in a I'm going to put rainbows on your sadness way, but just in if you get into the realness of what's really going on, there's a lot more opportunity within that to live your life, your real life, mm-hmm. where that person really passed or you really lost that job or whatever it is. I'm not offering you an alternate. I'm saying to live your real life, which fully acknowledges. And I never assume that I know, even with all my grief, that I know anything about anybody else's. It's just scientifically based on their bond and what they've lost, you know? Yeah. Wow. That was lovely to listen to. One thing that I find, I guess, so meaningful about what you just said, and also in your book, and in talking to you last time too, is you have You've obviously, you've obviously worked very hard to get to this point, or you've practiced a lot. And there's just so much wisdom and understanding in what you just said, this idea that the mind is always searching for an answer, right? Or this finish line, an end to the story. And in the book, and even in what you just said, you share so much sort of wisdom on the paradox, I guess, of how the mind is searching for an answer, yet the answer can't be found, or the answer is noticing what's happening in the present moment. And it's such a shift for people to start training that part of their awareness, I guess, or their mind to be able to do that. And yeah, in the book, there's so many good practices for that, or ways, like you said, to here's a bunch of skills and tools or whatever it is, figure out which ones will work for you. Mm. And I I also like your focus. It's clear in the beginning of the book too. Nobody can do this for you. Mm. This is about you making a decision to do this for yourself and you can't change other people. And maybe just as a, a next jumping off point, I just wanted to read this because it was so awesome. And and I had a conversation with two parents who lost a child to suicide. Mm -hmm. And when I was reading this part of your book, it brought up some of the things that they shared, which was amazing. And I just want to read this. And then, um, so you say, what does support look like for you right now? And allow you to respond to them honestly. So this is when, I guess it's, Maybe this is from day four, day three, mm. uh, day th- the first week. And and then, and you say, and I don't know is a perfectly great answer, by the way. <laughs> Beautiful. 